What's going on, Justin Valentine from Roar Around the Ring. AEW is set to make their Toledo debut this Saturday, October 14th, with Collision at the Huntington Center. Uh, and with her dog, is that a dog I saw? Yeah, my two dogs just wanted in the room, so they are they're joining us as well. Beautiful. We have a full house. Uh, we have with us here the TBS champion with her dogs, Chris Statlander. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you very much. Of course. Uh, <laughs> so again, okay, we got to defer to the dogs. What are the dogs' names? Uh, I have Harlot and Saul. Harlot and oh, what? Are, what? Are, okay, what's the stories behind those names? Uh, Harlot is, or I might have to kick them out. They're very loud. Um, <laughs> oh. That's just uh, the names that they had at the shelters, and that's okay. You guys gotta go. You're being too loud. Get out. Lots to say. Scoot. Lots Scoot. To say. <laughs> that's all that's okay they might be able to stay oh my god <laughs> he's he's a maniac this is this is great <laughs> Just this for 20 minutes i'm good you know you again over four years into aew and you guys are still getting in front of crowds and markets that you haven't been in front of how much do you guys pay attention to that to that in the back and how big of a deal is that for you guys um i mean I think it's more noticeable when we do go to the same places a lot. I think that we get very like familiar with the buildings and the crowds and whatnot. And as much as it, as great as it is to continue to uh, go back to the places that love us and that we love, I, I think we all want to branch out and go to new places as well and bring our product to new eyes and everyone. And we want everyone to see everything that we do so I think both are equally important but uh I think that there's still so much so much so many places that we have yet to go to that uh I think we all kind of want that a little bit more than anything yeah awtix.com if you want to join them in Toledo for a collision let's talk about you a little bit though you kind of had a start and stop in your AEW run a couple injuries that you've had to deal with and then you come back and your first night back you win the TBS title what was mm -hmm. that transition like going from recovery and the start and stop to getting thrown right into a title picture? Um, I mean, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way because there were so many times, especially with the start and stop because of my, both of my knee injuries. Um, there was just so much time off that I wanted to do and I still want to do everything and anything that I can. And that's why like the week after I made my return, I was on both of the house shows that weekend. I wrestled on dynamite. I wrestled collision. Wasn't a thing just yet, but I, 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 I wanted to be on everything and I wanted to be everywhere. And I feel like I just have so much time to make up for, um, not just for the company, but also for myself. Uh, I feel like, it was probably a collective year and a half, almost two years that I was out just due to knee surgery. And um, yeah, and it's, there's like, there's no time like the present. And if I'm good, I'm good. And I want to prove that I'm good. And that's, that's really all that it's about is just making sure that everyone knows that I'm good to go and that I want, I want to do this. But we also have the AEW women's title, which we just saw Hikaru Shida win on Dynamite. What is the balance like in your mindset when it comes to focusing on the current title you have now, but also that title you probably want to get to at some point, maybe both at once or what do we think? I think, I think that would be cool. Um, I, I think that's something maybe down the line that could possibly happen if the opportunity presents itself, but that title has seemed to escape me a few times. So I'm okay giving that one a break for a little bit while I am doing everything I can to make my reign as the TBS champion just as important as the main title. And I feel like I'm doing everything I can to prove that it is just as worthy of a title. Um, not that it wasn't before, but it almost seems so impossible to get before just because of how great the hands that held it before were. And um I I feel like I proved that it is something that's a, obtainable to everyone and uh and I'm just going to keep proving that I am a worthy champion and if the time comes to be the main uh, AEW women's champion then hopefully that day will come and hopefully I don't have to injure anything else to get there. Please don't. You've had enough. <laughs> You've had enough. 
Talking about a big deal for the company, how about Adam Copeland showing up at Wrestle Dream? Talking about the reaction in the locker room from you guys, and also, have you crossed paths with him yet? How's that been? Uh, I haven't like officially introduced myself to him yet. Um, you know, he's he's kind of a big deal, so he's got lots of things to do and lots of people want to talk to him. So I get it. Uh, but I, I ho- hopefully next time. I see him or we're at the show together. Uh, I will make the formal introduction. Um, but it, it's always just such a incredibly big deal, um, not just for the locker room, but for the company and for all of wrestling to see such like a legend like him show up and want to do something new for himself and want to just create with the rest of the roster. And I think it's, I, I just think it's very special that, um, people that have paved the way in wrestling um still want they still see something special in the new things in wrestling and i think that's very important um and it's very uplifting not just for AEW but for all upcoming wrestlers uh that uh that everything that we do no matter where we are is special right well you mentioned AEW collision very new within the last year being added to our weekly watching schedule. How beneficial do you think it's been for uh, for everyone in the locker room and just the company as a whole to have a whole nother two hour TV spot uh, weekly for you guys to show off what you guys have going on? I think it, I mean, of course, more time is always better. Um, we all want a chance to be on, to be on the show and we all want a chance to uh, just, you know, get our time to shine and, with collision now being added, there's more of a chance to do that, especially with the girls. Cause we have such limited time as it is. We really only get one spot on the show and that's just, that's just kind of how it is. And now that we have a third show to get that spot on, um, it just gives us, it gives the women's locker room, especially just a little bit more of a drive to know that there is like, there is always something worth fighting for. And it, and it, it's hard to see sometimes because we all know how limited our time is. Um, and that's not, you know, that's not like a dig at anyone or anything. That's just, that's just how it is. That's just, that's just the way it is. And um, there's a mutual understanding at that, but like the opportunity to know that there's another opportunity to get that time. Uh, it just gives a little bit more, it just gives us a little bit more drive and, uh, I think it's very important for us to have that. Well, despite your start and stop in the injuries, you've put on some great matches within your AEW run. If someone wanted to see what Chris Statlander is all about, and you had to send them to one match to be like, you know what? Check this one out. You'll get me. You'll get what I can, can offer and what I can deliver. What match is that within your AEW run that you're most proud of that you would send anybody to to say, check this out and you'll get it? I, I, that's such a hard question because I am so proud of so many matches and um and it and it's not always just about just like oh that was a great performance uh like I had a I had a great match uh or oh I won this one so it I it's great it's just like I there's so many I feel like all of my matches are so different in a way um because I really try and uh bring out the best of who I'm in the ring with and I have to do that in different ways because everybody else is so different and I it's it's hard to really just pick one match that I'm like this is the one I'm so proud of this one this is the only one I can think of like I I'm so proud of I I just be like just look me up on YouTube and just watch whatever watch what comes what comes up like I can't I can't pick just one I'm just I'm very proud of many of my matches yeah that it's the way it should be. Just look me up. Whatever you find, you're going to enjoy. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about some people that you looked up to as you've rose within the industry, both past and present, that you've either, either learned a lot from or maybe, you know, modeled some of your current stuff off of? Um, so some of my uh, my inspirations when I first started training were my trainers, because such as Pat Buck and Brian Myers and VSK and um that's just because I didn't watch wrestling before I started wrestling. So I hadn't, I had no, nothing to really compare anything to, but once they, um, once there was like a noticeable, like they believe in me and they think that I could, I have what it takes. Uh, all I ever wanted to do was just make them proud and, uh, 
just their belief and support for me was what inspired me. Um, and that's such a corny thing to say, but that's really, that's really how it was for me. And, um, uh, people like, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some of my, I guess, mentors at AEW, uh, Orange Cassidy is a huge inspiration to me. He's helped me out so much more than anyone will ever uh, understand. Um, not just in the ring, but also out of the ring. Uh, and then, of course, there's coaches like Jerry Lynn. He's always been so helpful. And he'll send me clips of things that he used to do and be like, you should do this. And I'll be like, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, whatever you say, Jerry. Right. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of people that help me out. And um I, I wish I could name them all, uh, but there are so many. It would be a forever list, and I'm just so thankful mm. for everyone that's ever believed in me. Well, we have a couple of questions from some of our followers on X. All right, Nice Guy Orion wants to know, do you come up with the details and designs of your wrestling gear on your own, or what is the story behind any of that? Uh, yes, a lot of the wrestling gear is, or pretty much all my wrestling gear is my ideas um, for... I, I don't know how to like describe it without like just showing it to you, but I will do my best. Um, my more recent stuff that I've done uh, with the, like the swirly things and whatnot in the design, those were inspired by my, I think it was my senior year varsity gymnastics leotard. Huh? Um, and when I first started wrestling, I didn't have gear and I just had my grandma cut my old gymnastics leotards in half and that was my wrestling gear and it worked great because they were also unique and yeah, they were made to move and stuff. So it was like worked out well for me. Um, but yeah, I think it's just kind of, that was just kind of an homage to my athletic background, I guess. Um, the colors and whatnot are, I just try and do what I think is cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, a, a lot of the swirly things that you see is, uh, it's it's from it's a design that i stole from my varsity gymnastics leotard okay so how about planet statlander i'm guessing they're a fan i mean it could just be a coincidence there is <laughs> what type of story if any is there behind the catch frame mama's home because they feel like it's such a great thing <laughs> okay so that had nothing to do with me at all uh anytime I would listen in on like best friends calling a match. Chuck would always say like when he was running, he's about to run and do something. He would say, daddy's home. So when he would listen to me call my stuff, he would say mama's home. So I just started saying it in matches. And now and that's how that happened. Um, there's no reference to any sort of mom related things or whatnot. Uh, it was literally just, he would say mama's home when I would do like a big running move or something like that, or a big power move. And uh, I just started saying it, and now it's a thing. Now it works. Now it works. All right, <laughs> yeah. Well, before I let you out of here, we uh, we are called Roar Around the Ring. I want to ask you, what is the loudest roar or fan reaction that you have been a part of, whether it was for you or you were just there and for, for something else? What is the loudest fan reaction you can remember in your career? I think it was it was unfortunately me taking a move but it was when I wrestled Brit at All Out in Chicago in 2021 and she hit the Pittsburgh sunrise on me aka the Panama sunrise and I think it was the hint that Adam Cole was about to show up but even I didn't know that he was about to show up I just thought she just you know did the, she I thought she just did that and I like I was like all right cool yeah. I can do it sure and um yeah, so I think that because it was, they haven't really seen any of us girls do something like that before, but also like the subtle wink at he might be showing up. Um, I I just, I, I've, I hear that video and I hear that reaction. I think that's like one of the craziest reactions that I've ever heard. And uh, I'm just happy I got to be a part of it. And I th And I'm happy that I was also blissfully unaware of all the antics of it as well. That, and how much do they keep everyone else who's not involved in the segment or angle out of the loop? Are you guys like experiencing this, experiencing this like we are when it comes to, I didn't know he was here. Like what about Adam Copeland? Is that something no one knew? Um, I think they tried to keep it under wraps. Um, I think other people knew. I just, I'm so clueless to everything. I, I don't know anything. I don't know who shows up ever. Um, 
so I am truthfully, blissfully unaware. And um, I think the fans that read the dirt sheets and they and they just refuse to just be surprised. They they know more than I do um, because I I don't know who shows up until they show up and they walk out of the screen. I'm like, oh my god, they're here. So yeah, um, I I'm the worst to know about any inside gossip because I that is the best way because now you can just experience it. Oh my god, like have yeah. No- that is the best way to watch wrestling. I, I that's what I say. Stop reading dirt sheets. Have yeah. fun. Be surprised. It's okay. That's that's my shout out to everyone, everyone listening. Just this, just have fun. Just be surprised. It's okay. I you don't pro- need to know everything. I was gonna say wrestling is so much more enjoyable when you don't know what's gonna happen next. I promise yeah. you that. I promise you that. Uh, mm-hmm. AEW's making their Toledo debut. Toledo, that is. Huntington Center, October 14th. Collision is going there. AEWTIX.com to get those tickets. TBS champion Chris Statlander, thank you so much for taking the time. We'll talk soon. Get back to those dogs, okay? Yes, they're whining through the door. I don't know if you've heard that. But... I have. I'm like, all right. They're like, okay, cool. That's cool. <laughs> Toledo, fantastic. Get off the interview. Like, we get it. Mom's leaving. It's fine. We yeah. know. <laughs>